So the first real truth table we're going to look at is the conjunction, which is based on an AND statement. And so it's essentially claiming that both those two simple statements that make up the conjunction are true. Although we have to remember that there could be a negation in there, and that makes all the true and falses rather confusing. However, if either or both of the statements in a conjunction are false, then the outcome will be false. So we can see here a truth table, and this time it has four lines because there are two to the n, two to the two possible outcomes. That's P and Q are our two simple statements. In the first line, P is true and Q is true. And then P is true and Q is false. The third line is P is false and Q is true. And then finally, the last combination, P is false and Q is false. And then if we look, for each of those lines, the output of the conjunction is shown on the far right. And that means when P is true and Q is true, P and Q is true. And then for all three of the other lines, there is at least one statement that is false. So if they are not both true, then the outcome of a conjunction is false. So the final output of the conjunction truth table is true, false, false, false. Before we move on, I would just say that these basic truth tables are what you need to memorize in order to follow through the lines of logic in more complicated arguments. So we're looking at the nuts and bolts of logic here, and that means the small details, but it works because a truth table really is like a machine. Each statement has a certain line of logic based on the inputs, the truth values of your input statements like P and Q, and it will pop out a certain truth value at the other end, but it follows the same logic on every line. So it gives you a reliable output for all the situations you are thinking about. So we can look at this working by considering the four possible outcomes for the conjunction function. And we'll do that with a real world example. Let's consider these two simple statements. Today is Wednesday and I have a scout meeting. So let's say that we're going to put these two statements into a conjunction, P and Q. In other words, today is Wednesday and I have a scout meeting. There are four situations. The first one is when P is true and Q is true. If both of the things are true, then P and Q is true. That's what I'm saying. It is Wednesday and I do have a scout meeting. So P is true and Q is false is when it is Wednesday, but I do not have a scout meeting. So in this case, P and Q is coming out as false. So the line of logic does not show that what I'm saying is supported. And the other way around, the same thing happens. If P is false and Q is true, then I do have that meeting, but it's not Wednesday. So the overall statement, P and Q, is still false. And then finally, the obvious case, if they're both false, then I am just completely wrong. There is nothing about what I said that is true. I neither have a scout meeting, nor is it Wednesday. So with that in mind, we can now look at the disjunction table. So a logical disjunction is an inclusive OR, and the exclusive disjunction or exclusive OR claims that only one of two statements. So it's OR, but not both. So let's look at the truth tables here. And we can see that in the case of the inclusive OR, that is the third column, if P is true and Q is true, the inclusive OR is true. If either one is true, so P is true and Q is false, or P is false and Q is true, we still get true out of the inclusive OR because it's either OR or both. 
only in the last line, only when P is false and Q is false, does the inclusive or give us a false outcome because neither P or Q is true. And if we look at the last column, the far right column, that is the exclusive disjunction. And you'll see that that is false when P is true and Q is true. Then that means both of them are true and the exclusive disjunction says either one is okay, but not both. So we get that additional false on the first line of the truth table. So this is what we do for any truth table. We can decode the truth conditions of the different cases. We do this by resolving each connective starting with the least dominant. So here are some examples from Gallo, the textbook we were using in class. And I'll leave you to work out the truth tables for these on your own. But looking at the first one, which is not P or Q, so we have a disjunction inside the brackets and a negation outside. So the least dominant in this case is the disjunction because it's in the brackets. So we will resolve that. We know the truth table for a disjunction now. And then we will negate that entire column and that will be the output of our whole truth table. But now we need to look at the more interesting truth functions, the conditional and the biconditional. So as we saw, the conditional is an if-then type of statement. P conditional Q, if P then Q, and I may say P into Q just for convenience, although it's not official naming convention to represent the conditional. However, in a conditional, the if clause is called the antecedent, as we saw before, and the then clause is the consequent. So for example, if you pass the midterm exam, then you will pass the course. In this case, P is you pass the exam, the antecedent, and Q, you pass the course, is the consequent. So P into Q, if P then Q, what are the truth outputs for this conditional relationship. I can tell you that the actual outputs are true false, true true. So the conditional is only false in the case where P is true and Q is false. That's weird, isn't it? When P is false and Q is false, the conditional is true. How does this actually work? So fortunately, we can look at it in detail by considering all four cases. If P is true and Q is true, then obviously I did not lie to you. I told you if P then Q, P happened and Q happened. So if I said, if you pass the exam, then you will pass the course, and you did pass the exam and you passed the course, clearly you would agree that I had not lied to you. In the second case, when P is true and Q is false, it's slightly different. I told you, if you pass the exam, you will pass the course. And you did pass the exam. P is true, but then you didn't pass the course. Q is false. So obviously, in this case, I did lie to you. So the output of this line is false. In the third case, P is false and Q is true. This is where it gets interesting. I told you, if you pass the exam, then you will pass the course. You didn't pass the exam, but you did pass the course. However, I didn't say that you didn't have other options apart from the exam. I didn't say, crucially, if you do not pass the exam, then you do not pass the course. I didn't say that, that's a different statement. So, the output of this line is true. And finally, same way, P and Q are both false. So if I told you that if you pass the exam, then you will pass the course, and you fail the exam, and you fail the course, then I still haven't lied to you. Or at least, even if I have, you would never know because you didn't pass either of them. My statement was only talking about what happens in the case that you do pass the exam. 
So, seeing as you didn't, nothing I've said to you can be said to be a lie. So the output of this line is also true. So this can lead us to even more absurd situations. Truth from nowhere. What's going on here? Well, consider this statement. If cars run on orange juice, then 1 plus 1 equals 2. Or what about this one? If all dogs are cats, then 5 equals 7. So both of these statements are conditionals, and both of them are absolutely true. What? This is madness. What's happening? Well, if we look at the first example, we'll see the antecedent is false, cars do not run on orange juice, and the consequence is true. 1 plus 1 equals 2. If we look at the second example, both the antecedent and the consequent are false. All dogs are not cats, and 5 does not equal 7. But the conditional is only false when its antecedent is true and the consequent is false, when P is true and Q is false. These are other situations where P is false and Q is true, or when both of them are false. And all of those give a true output from the conditional truth table. So the idea here that it's important to get is good logic is not the same thing as the truth or falseness of your original simple statements that you put into the logical expression. You have true or false on your input statements and then you apply the logic. If the statements are true and the logic is good, then you will be able to rely on your outcome. But if the input statements are bad, then even if the logic is good, then you won't get good results out if what you're looking for is a logically sound argument.